Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, we are going to be sharing the first 10 things to do with your Google Pixel 7 Pro. So let's dive in and get started right away. All right, so the very first thing that you want to do is you want to actually name your phone and make it yours. So to do that, you just go to your settings, you go all the way down, you go to about phone, and then over here it says device name. Simply click on it and just rename your phone. So in my case, I can rename it to Saki 7 Pro. So now when I share my phone on a Bluetooth network, on a Wi-Fi network, or if I'm sharing stuff with other people, this is the name that they're going to be able to see, and it's going to be much more easy to identify. Also, it is a nice custom touch. Now, the next thing you want to quickly do has to do with the battery. So what you want to do is, again, in the settings, go to battery. And this is going to be important based on how long you think you're going to hold on to your Pixel 7. So go into Adaptive Preferences. You can see it says Extend Battery Life and Optimize Charging. So you click on this guy and basically you want to enable Adaptive Charging and Adaptive Battery. Both of these guys are going to be designed to extend the battery lifespan. Now this here particularly is a very good option when you enable this guy when you're charging your battery, the phone just knows intelligently whether or not you're going to be using the phone for the next couple hours. So if, for example, you're going to sleep, it is going to reduce the charging speed automatically, which puts less stress on the battery and therefore extends the battery life. Now this one here simply extends the battery life. So not the lifespan, but the battery life. So if you have this enabled, it's just going to intelligently make sure you get maximum battery out of per charge. And one more thing you want to quickly set up is you want to set up your navigation option. So look at this. Right now I have the button navigation. So back, home, recent apps, okay? So if I go to the settings and if I'm going to go back home, I tap the button. So you have the gesture navigation that is known by everybody. You can go to system. You can go to gestures. And you can go into the navigation option right here and you can choose between gesture navigation and three button navigation okay gestures work amazing on the pixel phones so i prefer that and also if you choose any one of these guys you can further dig in and change related options so for example if i enable this i can actually swipe from the bottom to access my google assistant all right if i don't do this it just goes home as usual, so that's no problem, but you can enable that function. And if I were to go to three button navigation, and if I tap here, you can see I can use this button. If I press this, press and hold, and that will bring Google Assistant as well. Alrighty, so you got those options. All right, so let's talk about a few camera features and settings you want to try out. So the very first thing that you want to do is when you launch your camera, just go to the settings and just go through these settings and modify them as necessary. The one I want you guys to enable just in case is if you scroll down uh, under composition, you wanna actually add a grid to your camera. So tap on this guy, get yourself a four by four grid. Now, when I go back to my camera, you can see that we have a grid, which is gonna allow me to align photos better so I can take a better shot. You can do a four by four or a three by three. And also back in the camera settings, scroll down and make sure where it says camera photo resolution, it is set to full resolution. And that's gonna allow you to take the maximum quality photo every time you take a photo. The next thing you wanna be aware of is when you go to video, your pixel is capable of recording in 4K using all lenses. That's the ultra wide, wide and telephoto. So when you tap the options over here, you can go to 4K, you can go to 60 frames per second, okay? And then when you record, look at this. Remember, you can switch between all these cameras during recording at 4K at 60 frames per second, which is pretty amazing, okay? So that's an option you have. Additionally, there's another option where you can record in 4K at 30 frames per second, or in 1080p at 30 frames per second using the HDR mode. That's the 10-bit HDR mode. So again, I can do 4K, 30 frames per second, HDR. I can turn it on 
or off. But when you turn it on, it actually is gonna give you an amazing effect that you're gonna be able to experience on your phone's display yourself. So if I do a quick recording, and if I press pause, I mean stop, now if I go into the video, look how the video is just gonna brighten up, okay? That brightness is because of HDR10. It takes out much more light and data to, to get you a high quality video. Also under video, always be aware of this little button. When you click it, it allows you to choose between different stabilization types. Now, anytime you don't know what any of these things mean, there's always gonna be a little question mark you can tap and it is gonna give you examples and information regarding that actual option. So look at that, locked, active, cinematic pan. So it's gonna tell you exactly what those are and why they're gonna be benefiting you. One more thing, if you go over to motion, this is a great little option. There's a long exposure and an action pan option. Now the good news is again, let me just push this down. You can tap the question mark and see examples of what they're talking. So you can take photos just like this one using your phone. Normally you would need a DSLR with certain settings enabled. This makes it easy. So if I go to long exposure, question mark, that's gonna allow you to take photos just like this one, okay? This is the normal one. That's the one with the long exposure. Look at that. So you can tap on the question mark to get tons of information. So those are a few camera tips and tricks to enhance your ownership of the camera on the Pixel 7. Now new with the Pixel 7 Pro, we now have face unlock feature. So back at the settings, you wanna scroll down and you wanna go to security right here. And then what you can do is you can go to face and fingerprint unlock. If you have a pin number, dump it in. And you can see we have the face unlock right here. You tap on it and it's gonna allow you to set the face unlock. It is gonna use the front camera to capture your face. Just make sure you read all the text right here to get a full idea of how it's gonna work. So when you tap on more and agree, it is gonna ask you to set up the face unlock by looking at the phone. You have to tap the star to do it. Now, there's one thing I wanna let you know. There is a full scan version and a quick scan version. The full scan version sometimes is a little harder to achieve. So look, they have an option at the bottom here that's, that says set up for limited vision or head motion. So if you click this, okay, this is a simpler form of the face unlock feature. Even says it, if you enable this, okay, you may have to directly look at the camera more directly than if you go without this, okay? So I recommend you do without this option to get a full face unlock read. But if you're having difficulty setting that up based on the lighting condition you might be in at the time, you can go for the limited vision or head motion option, okay? Just so you know. So that's one. And then with the fingerprints, there's one thing you wanna quickly do. Of course you wanna set these. These are my, these would be my primary choice in biometrics. You can see I already have two fingerprints right here. What I like to do is tap over here on the finger and actually and give it the name corresponding to the actual fingers. Is my index finger right here. So I would give that a name, index. So when I come back to manage it, at least I know which one I'm dealing with, especially if you have a bunch you might get confused. So that's gonna be easier to manage, all right? Now, one more thing you can quickly do with your Pixel 7 Pro is you can change your wallpaper without even leaving the lock screen. So look at this, I can press and hold, it brings up this menu. Normally, I would go into wallpapers and style and then go inside to uh, change a wallpaper and pick whatever I want. But now what you can do is if I press and hold, oops, there we go. I can just tap on the image right here that is being shown and it's going to change it to that wallpaper which I think is quite amazing. And also the animation, when it actually changes, looks really nice and smooth. So look at that. Okay, and these wallpapers here are gonna change based on what you've been looking at previously. So that's great. Now one more thing I have to do real quick with the Pixel 7, go to home settings. Again, press and hold, go to home settings, and at the bottom where it says search your phone, I like to go inside and enable this option, always show 
keyboard. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I go like this, it goes into the app drawer, but then I have to press this to access the keyboard to start searching. Now with the option that I just showed you guys, let's go back here, home settings, search your phone, always show the keyboard. Now when I do this, it is just going to bring up the keyboard automatically so I can quickly search for the app I'm looking for. That's the way I like it. Alrighty. Now one more thing, out of the box your Pixel is only going to show four applications per row. You can see I have it set to five so I can fit more apps on the screen. So to change that, you go to your settings, you go into the wallpaper and style, and at the bottom it says app grid. So if you tap this guy, you can have 4x4, four four, which should be the uh, default. There's 4x5, I don't know why anybody would do 3x3. Three you can even do two by two if you want, but uh, I like to do five by five. It's got a large screen, fit as many as you can for easy access. Now one more thing, when you turn off the pixel, you're going to see that we have an always on display. If you don't want this to save battery life, you can turn this off. So let's go inside here, okay? What you do is you go to your settings, you go into display, you go to lock screen, and then at the bottom, it's going to say, always show time and info. And it says right there, increased battery use. So if you disable this and turn off the phone, you're not going to have an always on display and you're going to save some battery life. Okay, just so you are aware. So let's go back inside. Fantastic. Now, another thing I like to do on the lock screen is if you look at the bottom here, you're going to see it says Socky Tech. I put that text there just to personalize the phone a little bit. You can do it as well. Okay, so we're going to go inside, again, go into the settings, and then go to display, and then you want to scroll down, and uh, let me see, I'm sorry, go to lock screen right here, and on the top, it says add text on lock screen. So if you click this, you can put anywhere that you want here. It can even be a quote, and you can see it can be pretty long, okay? So if I had this whole thing, let's see if it's going to fit or not. No problem. Okay, so you can have a long quote down there. All right, so let's continue. Let's go into the settings and all the way at the bottom under system, you want to go to gestures. We've been here before, but now we're going to talk about other stuff. So we got things like tap to check the phone, lift to check the phone. So if the phone is turned off sitting on the table like this, you can lift it just to check it. Or again, if it's turned off, you can tap to check it and then just move on if there's nothing going on. Alrighty, so that's that. They should be enabled by default, but these things here were not. So flip to shh. So basically, if this is enabled and somebody's calling you or an alarm is ringing, if you just grab your phone and quickly put it on the table like this, it is gonna stop ringing. It's gonna mute the phone, which is very convenient and quick way to do it, okay? You can do it in a hurry and it works every single time. You have the one-handed mode, so if I click this and enable it, I'm able to, if I'm using the phone with one hand like this, and I just want to reach the top, I can just swipe like this, and the whole screen, as you can see, just came down, okay? And I can send it back like this, bring it down like this. Works nice, okay? So it might be useful, but sometimes it's going to activate for no reason. So I like to actually disable this guy. Just so you know, the option is there if you prefer to have it on. And of course, the, one of the best features, press and hold the power button to bring up the assistant. Make sure this is enabled. I think it's enabled by default, but you can press and hold to bring up the assistant with the power button. Just makes everything easy, especially if you're somebody that uses Google Assistant a lot. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know for now, guys. Have a fantastic day.